Hi, school dude Clem here. As some of you, uh, hi, school dude Clem here. As some of you think I say. Anyway, about a couple of years ago, I started building this circuit, and then realised I couldn't finish it because I thought I had the parts I needed, but didn't. So it had to come to a stop. Now, for those of you wondering, this was going to be my next Tesla coil project. And, well, like I said, I just didn't have the parts to finish it. Fast forward two years and now I do have the parts to finish it, which I'm going to be doing shortly. But I did do a video of making, you know, what I've done so far, what you can see here. Which is what I'm... That's been on my hard drive for a couple of years, just waiting to be uploaded. So, I'm going to upload that now. And when I've uploaded that, I'm going to get on with doing the rest of this. So, here we go. Well, hello there. This is the completely shagged out Call to Clem. I really need to reprint this, but unfortunately my printer's magenta is not working at the moment. Even though I changed the cartridge, it still isn't printing properly. Anyway, welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I think it's about time we got back to building Tesla coils. So I found this circuit online. It's by Steve Ward, so it's not my circuit. I'm going to build this up and see how well it works. I think we're going to start with the power supply, because that seems like a good place to start. And if this thing works, I might even try to fry next door stereo with it. Because it keeps playing it. And last night it was nice and quiet until about 10 to 3 in the morning, then he turned it on. If it's not noise with this stereo I've got to put up with. Some twat outside is always making a lot of DIY noise. Well, I'm going to put up a message. On the lamppost outside this person's house, I don't exactly know who it is, so hopefully they'll read it. Yeah, at least the black in my printer still works. I think that's a suitable letter. Or well, suitable message. It's either that or connecting a speaker outside and screaming into a microphone at him. Which wouldn't be the first time I've done that. Yeah, let's get on with this thing now. I need about 11 hours of sleep each night. And last night I think I'd be lucky if I got four. And people wonder why I'm always so grumpy. Anyway, yeah, let's start with the power supply, it looks. Oh. I've got components already, trying to, um... I know you didn't really see it on the camera, but I've got... Even the components are eager to get in the circuit, so I think we better get on and do this. Alright, so I think the first thing to do is look for a suitable transformer. We don't need a particularly beefy one, just one that can provide 25 volts at 2 amps. So, we'll give this one a test. Also, it would be helpful if I turn the meter on to the right function. We want voltage and AC. Alright, so let's see what this transformer is doing. I'm just going to plug it in at the other end here. Okay, only joking. But would you look at that? That's right just about where we need. Would you believe it? Found the right transformer right straight away. Okay, well, here it is. The B-plus supply. I did kind of F up a little bit there, but I think we'll be good. You know, I think we'll still be good. Now, the schematic did call for two 2200 microfarads capacitors here, but... I decided that I would use six 1000 microfarad capacitors because, well, these are the only capacitors I have that can handle that kind of voltage. Anyway, I put three 1000 microfarad capacitors in parallel here and another three in parallel here. So that's 3000 microfarads per side. So it's a little bit more capacitance, but that's just going to give us more oomph. So what I'm going to do now is see if this thing works. According to my calculations, because this is a voltage doubler, as well as a rectifier, we should have about 70 volts coming out of this, give or take a few. 
Alright, well, let's plug this in and see what voltage we get. Yeah, alright. We've got about 68 volts. Well, that's pretty much right in the ballpark. I'm a little bit worried about adding a voltage regulator to this because we're right at the maximum operating voltage of an LM7812. So, I don't know how this little thing's going to handle that. Hopefully it won't blow up. We're at 34.2 volts. I think that will just about handle that. I think we might need a heatsink on it though because there's quite a lot of voltage to drop. So, yeah. So here it is, the Tesla coil board built, or at least the power supply part of it. I've got to test this voltage regulator and make sure that's working because this is just one I pulled out of one of my parts boxes. It's a bit bushed up, but it's the only LM728 I could find. I mean LM28712 I could find, so yeah. I'm just going to attach my meter there and uh, we'll see what it does. Alright, so let's connect this up to the transformer. The transformer is currently on at the moment. I'm only going to connect it up to one half of the winding, so one side of this wire, one of these wires is just going to go there. And this one is going to go there, and if we get 12 volts out, we'll know the thing's good. 11.9 volts. Okay, well, that's well, like they say, well within the ballpark. So, in the next video, we're going to be putting in the... I don't know why I say we, but... In the next video, we're going to be putting in the triple five timer and the gate driver chip. And then, of course, after that... Got to do this part and find out what capacitor we need here. That's going to be fun. So, yeah, I think we're good. Alright, so I've just got to discharge these caps now. And then in the next video, I'm going to get on with the, uh, with the building of the rest of the circuits. So let's just discharge the caps. I have to say, that note that I made to tell those people to stop making all that DIY noise, I think it worked. Because I put it out there, and within half an hour or so, it stopped. I am God! Actually, no, not really. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to continue discharging this and then I'm going to shut the camera off and get some sleep and stuff in the next video. We're working on the, um, the two chips. So until next time, goodbye. I've actually got to check that this voltage regular... But reg regulator works because it's just one that I pulled out of my parts box that's been in there for a while so I'm going to say this all over again. I know the claim who's editing this video is probably getting really fed up with it.